Hey, Bjorn Strong, I'm here. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we have got a number of things to do, and uh, a bunch of them are here in this uh, in this apartment complex we're about to head into. We need to check out a couple of uh, rooms around here. One of them is... What's this one? Huh. Uh, one of them is down here. We need to snap a lock off a door and check it out for an old woman. What is that? Someone has torn down the wall. So we could just walk in this way to here. Oh, that's interesting. An old grocery list on the table and checks. What happened here? You can't foreclose on an apartment with a hole in the wall. It'll still be accessible... Uh, through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here, except the stuff in the fridge. Uh, indeed, says Logic. So I can take a nose of fed and some pence. Yeah, that seemed... I'm not sure why I needed a whole thought for that. I could have just looked in the fridge. So what's his green spot here? The sea below looks cold and winter gray. It is a cold and winter gay kind of place. Now, she wants us... Okay, there's two things. There's a door with somebody in it who we think is squatting. And she has sort of given us... I wouldn't say permission exactly, but... Um, uh, license, maybe, to check check the place out. That looks worrying. Here's someone walking around inside the side range of the furniture. The number on the panel says set, uh, says 10. Uh, this apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? Excuse me? Of course not. You have plenty of reason to enter. Um, then open the door so I can verify your identity. Oh, come on. It's a pause for you hear the door being unlocked. Well, that was easy. That was smart, the lieutenant says, nodding towards the unlocked door. So we can go in and chat to this person here. Before, what are we looking at? A blister pack of medicine peeks out of the box. You should take it? I mean, maybe. Looks like a fine mattress. Don't be ridiculous. You can hear it swarming with bugs. <laughs> oh, now I'm arguing with myself. All right, let's, what's going on here? Okay, hypnogamma proves my morale, but Real estate agent. Satisfied? My ma my name is uh, Marielle Charpentier, and I'm an agent with Martinace Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? She jingles a set of keys in her hand. But you were here last night. Anyway, there are a lot of key different keys there, more than 20 at least. Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. That is a sign of a true real estate agent. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? She fumbles through her purse, fishing out a light paper-clad passport. Inspect the passport. Um, it feels flimsy uh, in hand, with the words Revachal Special Administrative Region written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. I'm just going to say, she looks creepy with those wide open eyes. Um, I mean, everything seems to be in order. Hand back the passport. I hope it is. I mean, I don't know what a good passport looks like. Uh, Kim here isn't even watching. Thank you. She slips a passport back in your purse. Do you have any questions? You'll be back in Midtown in an hour. Um, who lived in the foreclosed apartment down the hallway? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three! We closed the apartment and plan on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. There's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? She spreads her hands. And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. It's like that. She snaps her fingers. The sum must have been puny. Uh, my money has also disappeared, I think. Oh, wait. Uh, I think... Well, it does not disappear from my hands, so I don't... No, I don't let it. It could have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life spark, and they're affordable. Yeah, and, like, totally dingy. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. 
Uh, it's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. So what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. That wasn't the question, but okay. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head, manicured hands, and crossed over her ch the chest. What are you doing here? She sighs, looks around. I need to get it ready for the next lease. But as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. <laughs> I fucked shit up too. Reprehensible. Who lived here? It was some kind of a moribund old man. He used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. She stops, hesitating. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Well, that's all, thanks. Of course, she replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you to leave. All right, well, what's in this? Can I still check out the box? No, I... I lost the chance for the box. I'm going to check this out. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. For black... I don't even know what an indirect mode of taxation is. That sounds like code for being a total sleaze. Um, okay, and then we can break into here. We can try to use the chain cutters to cut through the padlock, but the tool's not in hand. So that seems strange. So we'll leave and we'll maybe put the chain cutters in our hand instead of the bag. So now let's try it. Now it's a much higher chance, it's an 83% chance of being successful. And we failed anyway. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters and it's really not working. I believe it's the shackle you mean to cut, Detective. Lieutenant points to the corroded loop with a glove finger. You're just trying to help. Don't take it bad. Relax. <laughs> These chain cutters are broken, Kim. <laughs> Perhaps you should give it another go. Um, can I... Oh, I can try it again. And also, I'm just... I think also I get... Um, if I go here, if I put the gloves on, don't I get extra interface abilities? So yeah, let's put the gloves on as well. This should be about as high as I can get it. 97. <laughs> and I rolled snake eyes. Yeah, exact same same thing. Um, I have to now. I have to put more skills in interfacing. Uh, before I can do it. And uh, I don't have any skills to spend. Oh, that's kind of sad. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and I don't need to carry the chain cutters around. I'll put the bag back in so we can collect from the streets. I'll take the gloves off. Think to myself, that isn't just a five-pointed star. Oh, this right here. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. All right. This is clearly a different communism than the one I'm used to here in the real world. Inspect the symbol closer. The star in antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mazov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. So why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats are already using it. What's the deal with the... I mean, like the up, right side up one? or What's the deal with the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It's about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. And yeah, why white? Because white is the color of peace. And what does it evoke in me? Gone. Gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. You are the big communism builder now. It's you or no one. And I'm not sure I'm taking that on, right? That's... Um, there is uh, the Mazovian socioeconomics, but I can also try the Kingdom of Contest. Right now, I'm, I'm trying the uh, derealization to kind of learn where I really am. And I do wonder, like, is there a kind of existential mystery going on here? It kind of feels like maybe there is. Got this postcard I could maybe sell, blue oblong pen which I should keep. Um, now, 
I want to go to the tools, but I want to interact with my le my ledger of failure and hatred uh, because I think browse the case files again. That's not what I wanted. Inspect the clip. I think that's not what I want. Uh, look at the clipboard. Okay, what, what I want to do is where I was crossing things off that I did. Suppose I say read a case file and then I do want to come back and read these at some point. Maybe I'll read the next world mural. Maybe I'll get some, um, maybe I'll get a boost from my morale for doing this. And actually I should get morale boosts from failures as well. Anyway, the next world mural. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Coron. Cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads... True love is possible only in the next world for new people. It is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to move the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito is easy to track down. Only the ballet lettre have the litterage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew call it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with this? The case files do not show you find the author of the design. Read on. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner JV is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. Um, the 9,000 people subjected to the mural's, mural's message, uh, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa... Vill <laughs> Villo Obos, plus half the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rumbling in the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given the choice between two options, remove the mural, it is wrong, or keep the mural, it is right. I'm With the despite, I'm guessing they went to keep the mural. A staggering 78% of voters chose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority and that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. Um, the middle class are not to be blamed. It's human nature. I don't know why the middle class. I mean, why not the upper class, really? Um, did anyone ask what you believe in, man, with a smelly old toilet ledger? What do you want to tackle next, or are we done? I think we're done for now. Okay, I might... Alright, I am I have a lot of stuff I can take from my morale, so I might just uh, grab one of them. Because I've got a lot of those charges, and I'm pretty low on my morale. Now, we also wanted to see... Uh, needed to see apartment 28, and we couldn't find it before. We thought maybe it's out this balcony... And maybe the other one, I can't remember which balcony it was outside of, but it definitely was going to be outside of one of them. Okay. Um, no, it wasn't. Wait, was it here? Maybe it was. That's right. I think we're about to... Oh, this isn't it. But I think we're about to enter into here when um, Kim, the night before, said, Oh, it's time to go to bed. Getting late. So someone's been sleeping here recently. Cindy? Wait, who's Cindy? Oh, the girl who's out there. A hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate, the rats of the city. Okay, I can check that out as well. Enough coal to last several winters, smells of chemicals, as coal is often wants to do. Um, pour le homme lebreux jeans. Add to electrochemistry, but take away from reaction speed. I might try those on in order to... Um, Try to get rid of the grimace on my face. It takes electrochemistry to do it. And that one's locked. All right, so maybe we can go ask her if she's been sleeping in here. But that's clearly not what the cigarette smoker has been. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. But is that bed in the cool room yours? 
Ooh, not only have you found my address, you discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. It's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Shows the paint dripping on the wall. Like me, right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Don't you have a real home? Does anyone in the city like this? She replies, wistfully looking around. All right, are you a miner? Yes, I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. All right, cool. Yeah, I have other questions. Um, and we'll catch you later. Oh, and the snow has stopped, so it's gotten a little nicer around here. So it looks like... I don't think we can get up here at all. So... We'll try the other balcony. All right, just we're just passing through, ma'am. Don't. Oh, I mean, I should tell her what was going on with that. Uh, the person in that in Give that room. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment number ten. It was just real estate agents setting up the room for new tenants. I see. She takes out her handkerchief and wipes her nose. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Um. <laughs> yes, radio computer wizards are coming. They're going to save the place and the economy. No one is coming. There'll be nothing but squalor unless we start killing real estate agents. That's the communist option. Lax women and sexual deviants. That's who will come. There's the fascist option. Yes, radio computer wizards are coming. They're going to say Yeah, that one. That's like the techno option. Like the... What do they call them? Technocrats? And I'm sure everything will be fine. This apartment building is slow change, imperceptibly slow. Uh, I might go with that just because I've got the, the one thought. Yes, well, she doesn't know what to say. So she coughs, repeats, I hope they're good people. Your statements are too vague to comment on. Thanks, I'm off. Uh, and actually, I think if we look here and we go, yeah. So I have two superstar cop, one apocalypse cop, five sorry cop, one boring cop. Five in communist, two in fascist, two in ultra liberal, and six in moralist. Uh, good cop. I guess I'm a good cop because this is 19. I don't know. And then this is the stuff that came off my um, not badge, but what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, my like clipboard. So can I go in? Here? Oh, maybe there. I can't remember if there was some bottles in here. I can I can grab. Yep, and also some magnesium. Uh, let's go ahead and... I'm going to slam one more of these, because I've got... I had more than nine charges. I think I was okay to get some morale back. And then, yeah, let's try this balcony now. Alright, so... There were the three doors. I thought, like, none of these were it. So did we miss something? I'm gonna try again, so that's that's not gonna work, but I guess this one, these two don't look like they have options. So this store is made of metal and appears to be enforced. Someone here really values their security. Sure. Number 28, so with a cleaning lady said so the smoker in the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock at the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we're looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. We should return tonight after you've finished our day's work. How about 21 o'clock? Sounds good? Uh, sounds good. Tonight at 21. T tonight at 21. Right here, apartment 28. Writes down his little notebook. Good. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. So now that we've done that, we can also go just open that other door. Do the kind of dodgy thing that I don't want to do, but probably have to do if I'm going to get my gun back. So I, I don't like being blackmailed. That's a, that's a decision I've come to. Okay, um, let's see. There it is. Let's press our ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Carefully knock. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles a sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. The lieutenant looks uncomfortable. Lieutenant, what is your opinion of this task we're undertaking? Let's be honest, this isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day it tells you something new about yourself. Lieutenant replies, still inspecting the padded door. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? 
I mind that a local thug is using the RCM for his busy work, but if this gets us to the bottom of the hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. On the other hand, he looks at the surrounding window uncomfortably. We could just tell Everard we open the door and leave. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Everard? That's also an option. Yes, presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. He crosses his arms. You took this task, you make the call. So I suspect he's got eyes everywhere. If you're never opening and find out what's behind the door, or I'll unlock it. You try to be as silent as you can. There's a bit of rattling to the, the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clock. Thoughts race through your head. There's nothing else to do than leave until Everett. No conceivable reason for you to intrude on the premises. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's a treasure in there? A white alligator? A fountain of quicksilver? What I actually suspect is it's going to be the other side of that door in the kitchen that we couldn't go through. But I just... I already know that the mob boss is blackmailing me and I would not be shocked if this is like, if he wants to blackmail me more. And so if I go in there, then he can say, oh, you were breaking and entering and I can, he can like blackmail me for that. So I am not going to go in there. I've made up, I made up my mind about that kind of some time ago. Like, I mean, I don't really know when I, I don't remember when I made up my mind, but I was like from the get go, I, I just was thinking that was going to be a bad idea. So the other thing we need to do, though, is we need to talk to the lorry drivers and try to get see if we can find out anything about uh, the... Oh, there's another one of these things I haven't looked at. Let's check this thing out. Cone operative viewer has been bunk banged up inoperable. Anyway, what I was going to say is find if we can find anything about the um, drug kind of running. Okay, I've already looked at the mail delivery box. I haven't really looked... In here for bottles, we'll take some bottles. Good old 10 cent bottles. That's how I'm gonna be living here. Uh, anyway, so this guy we can talk to. Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? The man greets you with a smile. Care to sp uh, spare some change for working stiff? Huh? Sleep so I have to do some of those days. No, I ain't got no money. They don't want you to pay for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. I don't know who these bosses think they are. It's only like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down as luck if I had, say, four myself. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, uh, man, me and narcotics go way back. He folds his hand behind his head and leans back. Had some good time surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? Oh, do I ever know. But, he pauses, letting the memory dissipate. Those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. Lieutenant steps in. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bulk shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folk up in arms. I'm afraid it's heading towards a conflagration. Why, why are you still hanging around, then? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly and I'm missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. A rhymesmith? This is quite credible. It goes with his cadence and way of speaking. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man. I try to stay away from the criminal underbarrier of Revishal. I'm a guest here. We really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Uh, he's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. For conceptualization. Um... Your best verse? You have a bad verse in there. Just tumble beating liquor stains. Wait, no, what are you doing? She broke me. She fucking broke me. That's brutal, man, but you know, time will. No, stop. He's already mortified. <laughs> no, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen, she fucked me till I bled. That's, um... The name of God, what are you doing? Uh, it's not real, guys. It's not my actual thoughts. It's a poem. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It's cool, but... I will never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. Oh man, I'm glad. I'm glad I beefed up my morale. Yeah, he doesn't know what to say, so he just repeats. Yeah, yeah, I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust. They're honest. So thanks, man. Yes, and also thank you for stopping. He looks at you. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? All right. Let's. He liked my emotional poem, though. 
let me try my empathy with him now. Okay. In his eyes, a half-familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. What is in the southwest, my man? Excuse me, he emerges from the reverie. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has uh, touched a nerve. Um, really, you can tell me. Man, he sighs. I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no help in an absence, you know. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, a second kid on the way. Waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am, stuck in this shit so far from home. Deora? Deora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other, e other end of La Caillou, pretty much, on another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We got a little place there. I can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good and bad. An ache that brings you joy. He smiles warmly. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail. Of living with them, it comforts me. There's a pause and a sigh. Then it turns eyes to you. What about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is, this feeling? I miss someone, but I don't know who it is. I'm positive that's the feeling. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. But thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. He smiles. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. I like this guy. All right, that's all, all for now. Bye. So I'm going to have to beef up conceptualization if I want to really rhyme him up. Uh, clothes? Do any of these give me conceptualization boosts? I don't think so. This erect, indirect modes of taxation. I just don't know what that means. Oh, affluent moneymaker man. I wonder if I'll get more money when I trade in my um, my coins or not my coins, my bottles mmm, the luxury of fine things, just look at those black monk straps, after spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes and your tired feet you're right, beautiful things do make people happy beautiful things give you a rush, it's power crafting your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather, deciding how to present yourself to the world Remember, when they come and take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Those shoes that I totally stole from... Anyway, uh, whether you like it or not, wearing those shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra-liberal. They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to you deeper into free market ideology. So, if I go here now, will my ultra-liberal has gone up to three? This is from putting on these shoes. All right. Well, um, I want to go and sell my bottles. And I'll talk to this guy, because I totally suspect this guy of being in on the drug trade. But yeah, to see if I get more this way. Um, one bottle is 10 cents. So insert your bottles. 90 cents. All right, I did not get extra money that way, so I don't know why I thought I would. So let's just try these back on. Switch back to the green. Um, what do I think of the jeans? I no. No, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be tacky as all this, I'm gonna keep the yellow tacky pants too. It's just how it's gotta be. Um so Mr. Racist Man, I wanna talk to you. Before I do talk to you though, I wanna check something out in my thoughts. So I thought rigorous self um when I have a intelligence or psychology check, I heal a morale. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I don't see why, I don't see why I wasn't getting, um, the heal healing to morale when I would fail those checks below. So I'm confused. Anyway, here's this guy again, Mr. Racist Man. Looking for something, aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? You're a lorry man, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. It's a long drag on his cigarette. <laughs> Why not? You know where that shit comes from. Uh, Sara Misra, Sarfe, Elamara. They take the money from our local junkies here and use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. Um, they know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get to, us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage. Racial economic sabotage. 
All right. I think the way to get this guy is like agree with him and try to like um, get him to spill the beans on whoever's uh, uh, whoever is doing smuggling. So listen, I agree. It's our responsibility to keep this poison off the streets of Revachal, right? He has you warily and sure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds then. I know shit. If I did, I wouldn't tell you. Puffs on a cigarette. Then what are you still hanging around here for? Most other commoners have left. What do you think? I can't leave the lorry unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's a little kip sticking around at night. If I touch my stuff, the boss will be in my ass, ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry dear, nearby. I d Maybe I should just say nothing. Say nothing for now. Um... So I'll go find those spilled boxes. But if it's not you, then who is running drugs through Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking Silang, the beady South, uh, beady eyed South Samarin. He spits on the ground. His little side business is a scam. We'd be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Who is that? He's the Samarin guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Really just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after you broke the seals on his Humanox lorry. Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It's really apricots and oil when you're nearby. The lorry man wrestled a crack, cra raspy croak at his own totally empty sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like I offended your partner there. He doesn't look at the lieutenant. Too bad. Sunlang's usually a little bit south here in the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. His tribe are natural liars. Unlike natural racists like you. It's in their blood. He nods in a sagely manner. They'll never puff his cigarette. He's your man, all right? 100%. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Sunlang himself had to say. Guess we need to pay Selang a visit then. Guess so, he grins, contented with himself. All right, we're done for now. We've been led on wild goose chases before, but where is this uh, lorry with the spilled boxes? Is this it? This kind of looks like it's got spilled boxes, but it's not uh, letting me out. There's more lorries. Oh, I can come in here. Okay. I can kind of come in here. It looks like. Is this? That uh, looks like it's got spilled boxes, but... Alright, let's check this out. Oh, oh. Okay, alright, alright. Uh, ah, going around in circles. We'll try here. A bold slogan, Humanox, covers the truck. Alright. Horseback Monument. An old-fashioned monu an old monument stands in the middle of a traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the squanderer, greatest of the Fi Philippian kings of Revachal, son of Philippe II, the opulent father of Philippe IV, the insane. Dude, if you're calling your kid the insane, I mean... As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There's some odd indentations in the king's chest piece. What indentations? What did I? What do I see? Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the curious around where the heart is. A bullet? Visual calculus. Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? Okay. He cleans his glasses before looking up. I can't see it, but I take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martin Ace is riddled with bullet holes. His place saw a lot of action during the revolution. But his statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke, target practice, or a political statement. I mean, thinking political. It's a king and he is shot. Why not, he shrugs. What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here, and people still shoot them, sometimes at kings. He takes a note in his notebook. The, um, so we heard the crater story from Rene, so we have a better chance of knowing what this king did. Even by the standards of old Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philippe was known for his profligacy. But wait, well, he blew through the whole national treasury, started the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the Suezeran of Revachal. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the Anticentennial Revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy and the Insulidian Isola. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom co converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Kuragans, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Arum. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept in a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obscene dragon instead of a bed like normal person. Did he swim in it like Scrooge McDuck? The man certainly knew how to live, said the horrific necktie. There's no way that's true. 
But wait, you haven't even heard about the fabled cocaine ad addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's moral remains in the Insulinian Bay. This is a lot to process. His majesty's courtiers said it helped them connect with the higher realms. All right, where's he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulidian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleared out the royal mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution, when Martinace was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it to even finer pieces. So who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revachal in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time. A rare butterfly trapped in an amber floating on a sea of... shit. That's brilliant. It's funny and nihilistic, or I, it's a bad idea, or I really don't get art. That is kind of a cool thought, actually. Statue at the mini, min, moment of explosion. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Philippe III, the squander, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life, either. All right. Well, I think that is enough. Well, what do I think about this? Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yeah, you hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but keep it real and provide. And what hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic sand, and linoleum after you reemerged. It's a sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way and you won't let it break you. You ride. That's right. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's what I like, life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. You got those black papers, the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the uh, French goes and the solace. It ain't easy, but you do it, day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. And then there's and then there's pawning stuff off to that was just Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake him off for shit and pawn it off, law officer style. I guess I made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. Has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now ask yourself, are you rich? Uh, yeah. Get out of here. You're a pauper. You work harder than anyone. Almost run yourself to the grave. You're so proud of you, Pobo. Why is that? Fucking taxes, man. Uh, the system's broken. I, I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes, G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket. See them from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, and so much as sneeze. I haven't paid a single tax yet in this game. Aren't taxes almost non-existent in the Gossamer state that's Revachal? thought there were no taxes. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise tax, extraction tax. This tax, it doesn't even have a name. But there's stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for money from you here. The Gossamer state's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all your money. No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. And it doesn't help me solve my money problems, only making me into a free market type. Yeah, are you sure? What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Look, this is... <laughs> Bleeding nipples are kind of a pain, but how will it really help with that? Opt-in, but only a little. This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only really making me into a free market type. Opt-out. I don't... I'm already... What are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal, free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. Why would not being a free market type make me a racist? Go away. That's dodgy. All right. I think that's enough for today. I just barely avoided being a free market racist or something like that. I don't understand what just happened there. But that is all the time I have for today. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.